lots of reasons to believe in a dog food brand. Great nutrition, great price, and your dogs love the taste. But what if it's also made for Caribbean dogs? No artificial colors or flavors, with an eye on the environment, so we only use paper bags. Then you will be just as happy as your dog, truly. It's true, we love dogs. Ready? Yeah. Hold on, we need to get them back. Intelligent, highly active, and adorable are some of the words used to describe these lovely corgis. Now we're back at Jadsville Kennel with Jalil Dabdoub. Let's go. Alright Jalil, welcome back to Purebred Dogs. Thanks, okay. welcome. Alright, so Jalil, in 1985 you were gifted a Prembook Welsh Corgi by your parents. So I believe you are the best person to speak on them. In terms of their origin, they were originated in Prembrook shop in Wales. Right. Now, there are two, two, two type of Corgis. You have the Cardigan and you have the Prembook Welsh Corgis. Right, the two separate breeds though, two totally separate mm -hmm. breeds. But they're very, I they, they look similar, very, look very similar. They, they are similar, um, but two different breeds. And remember, Corgi is really a Welsh word from what I understand for small dog or small watchdog. They are both, the both type of Corgi. This is the Pembroke Tricom. You have the Pembroke, which is the one in Jamaica. You have the Cardigan. They are both herding dogs. Yes and um, both originate in Wales, but they actually have different origins. They are one of the oldest breeds in the world. The cardigan is traced to about 3,000 years ago, and the Pembroke, which is this one, is traced to about the year 10 AD, at a, around the time of William the Conqueror. Yeah. Um, the cardigans are based from an earlier period, like I said. They Standards of them are different. They are two totally distinct breeds. Um, but to a lay person, they may look very similar. Yeah. They are actually not. In terms of the characteristics, physical features, how can we differentiate them? Well, you would have to look on the details of the dog. For example, the proportions of the Pembroke is different than the cardigan in terms of height to length ratio. It's slightly different. Yeah, the cardigan is bigger. Slightly. Also, the wither height of the, of the cardigan is um, a bit higher. Yeah. The expression of the Pembroke is more foxy-like. Mm -hmm. It has a shorter, smaller ear, more pointed at the tip, whereas the cardigan one is a bit round, I yeah. think. The stop on the cardigan is a little more domed here, mm -hmm. and the Pembroke is not as domed. The Pembroke's expression is a little more foxish-like. Yeah. Um, also, the cardigans have a tail. The Pembrokes have tails or they can have no tails. Mm -hmm. Th this, this dog here, Troy, has a tail yeah. because he's not docked. A lot of the Pembrokes are docked, meaning the tail is banded off at a few days old. Or also, some of them are born without a tail. Oh. So, up to about the late 90s, most Pembrokes would have had their tails docked or yeah. been natural tailless. Um, the laws in Europe changed and docking of the tails were banned. So this dog now, Troy, was imported from Europe. Um, he has a tail, but he may be related and there are dogs in his line that may not. So in terms of personality, it is said that they have a personality of a German Shepherd. Do you agree with that? As a person who bred them? German yes. As well? they, look, they are a small dog, but they are a working dog. And they are very gregarious, super confident, and they are very, very defensive. When we say working dog, as in, because they are part of the herding group. Correct, herding group, right. Herding group. Now, is it that, because their sole purpose was to, they are bred to herd. To, they are similar to the German Shepherd in terms of their working um, function. They are primary herding dogs. Mm -hmm. 
they provide companionship as well because they're mostly seen now as Try. house dogs, you would, you would say. Yeah, a lot of people have them as house dogs, but they do work them still. Jamaica is one of the few places that don't use dogs to work, livestock. Yeah. A lot of countries still do use dogs for herding. Um, the Kogi is a herding dog and one of the reasons from what I understand from some of the breeders why tail docking was done was because of the style of herding the Kogi does. It's a nipping dog, so it would nip and run in between the, the, animals. the cattle. Yeah. Um, so obviously a small dog like that it could very easily injure its tail. Yeah. So, the, the, the custom I understand developed of banding the tail so that the stomping and stuff yeah. wouldn't damage the dog. Um, so primarily they are herding dogs because of their small size and their character. A lot of people like them for house watch dogs. I, I mean, you can nothing can move in a house and a hog you don't know, and they will bite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It takes a lot to keep them this sociable, like how they have you have them here with, mm -hmm. with you with me now. They're very active. Very, very active, very loyal and very strong character. I mean, you ask most vets, a cog is not an easy dog to control. If this was a big bodied dog, you would have some problems. They are destructive in a sense if you don't stimulate them. Yes, uh, when I said destructive, I wouldn't say destructive, they can be troublesome. But that is the case with all herding dogs and all highly intelligent dogs. I yeah. mean, German Shepherds are the same, the cog is if you don't keep them busy, they get bored and then start calling. As you can see, these just can't keep still. Yes, yes. Right? They, they will not keep still. They are up and around. Actually, they make good Schutzen dogs, IGP dogs. I've seen a lot of them doing man work and tracking and all of that. They're very good at it. Yeah? Yeah. People tend to give them toys to occupy their time. If they don't right. do that, you may have a problem. So persons who live in an apartment, so. It is recommended to pretty much have a, have a yard space or, or it doesn't matter. How can you... What is important is to stimulate the dog mentally mm -hmm. um, in terms of whether you're spending time with it, taking him for walks, whatever, but also obviously physical exercise. Mm -hmm. they, like all dogs, they need physical exercise. One of the difficulties with corgis indoor is that people don't care the nails and because they are on tiles, the nails don't rub down and it, the, the nails get spread. It's not only cargis, it can happen to different breeds of dogs. But you'll see cargis coming up with it and a lot of young, small house dogs where the, the nails, and if you look on her here, you'll see her nails are short and the toes tight together. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see the nails and the toes spread out because of the constant keeping the dog on tiles in the house and not outside. Um, as you can see, Troy, this is Troy's a five-year-old dog and he can't keep still yet. Yeah. Right? So in terms of um, lifespan, how long, how long these dogs live? Um, I have had them live 15, 16 years. Yeah? Um, yeah, I, do, I don't find them any different than the, the other, other, other breeds. breeds. Right, I, I mean, I'm not familiar with, with the statistics as to the lifespan, but I have had a lot of them living yeah. up in age as well. Back to the personality. What do you like most about their personality? Why? This. Them just can't stop. Them full of energy and life. Yeah. And them blend in very well. Um, them almost can look here, them very perceptive. Very perceptive. They can almost read your mind. I can stare at them and them know. That's where they're, they're limiting what they're doing or yeah, yeah, yeah. giving problem or so. Or, or are they with the, the shepherds? I do have a difficulty with them. I don't put them together unless I am there because these dogs will not back down. I learned the hard way. I had a dog at Kogi, one of my first Kogis that I brought in. And he fought with the shepherd till he was on death's door and he still wasn't going. All when the shepherd was willing to stop, he wasn't going. So yeah. because of, of their tenacity, mm -hmm. it's not recommended to put them together. I mean, unless you have them on a full obedience training because the cogs will not back down. We are another dog because of the size. Mm -hmm. May take a corner, they are not going to back down. In fact, they will just keep at it. As I, as I mentioned, training, they, they are stubborn, right? I wouldn't say stubborn, they're highly intelligent. And if you don't know how to control them, 
um, from six weeks old, you will have a warm time. Because a lot of people get a corgi pup and it's a cute little teddy bear looking something. <laughs> yes. But they get older. So if you don't keep them in line and let them know what are their bones, etc., from early. So they are easily trained? I find they are easily trained. They have an independent nature though, uh -huh. and you have to keep them stimulated. They have an eye food drive, because it is said that they have an eye food drive. You, you find that? Because if they have an eye food drive, they are easily trained. I, I don't find them have a food drive more than any other breed. I mean, maybe because I'm in it so long, I don't. I don't, some, sometimes each dog individually varies. Okay. Some of them love them toys. Some of them love a reward of being petted. Some of them like food. It's the same to me like all other breeds. Yeah. Is there any special thing that you feed with these particular um, dogs? No, I, I feed them the same um, dry food I feed the shepherds. Mm -hmm. And the same, them on the same regiment and program. Yeah. Um, some corgis can get a bit overweight. But I think that is more because of inactivity. Um, mine tend to keep very slim because I keep them very active and on the go. It, it, that is critical for health, just like people. If you're living in an apartment, obviously you're going to have to take the dog out once or twice a day. I mean, I'm living in a, a yard, so they are out and they have a free run and they can yeah. enjoy themselves and go around. But if you have an apartment, a little close-up apartment is not going to work for a corgi. Yeah. You want a little more space and if you don't have an enclosed yard, you're going to want to take the dog walking and, and get it moving around and mm -hmm. physically active and on the go. As you can see, they love to keep active. Yeah. So in terms of health, they have hip dysplasia concerns, such as like the, like, like the shepherds. Right? Are there any other health concerns you would have, have any challenge with? Um, to begin with, Let's be clear, when you say, talk about hip dysplasia, all breeds suffer hip dysplasia mm -hmm. to some extent or the other. Um, I have not experienced a lot of hip dysplasia at the corgis. Um, generally, they are healthy dogs and they live long. But again, as we discussed with Shepherd, it goes back to the quality of the bloodline and the seriousness of the breeder. Like I explained to you with the German Shepherds and similar to the Corgi, you get health tested dogs. Yeah. So the, the, the Shepherds that, that I have get hip and elbow checks yeah. and scored from international organization. The, the Corgis are not doing it locally, but yeah. the stuff that I bring in are checked, etc. But uh, the Corgis don't really, as far as I have experienced and I've heard, have any health issues that are alarming then. In terms of health, you don't necessarily have to be too concerned. Just take good care of the dog. Yeah, man. What is critical with the cog is don't treat it like a little small lap dog because it is not a lap dog. It's, it a, is a, dog. it's a herding dog made to work. Give it activity, mm -hmm. um, mental and physical stimulation, yeah. um, and always constant with that. Don't do it one week, not the next week, etc. Because they need the activity, they need they the mental. They love to chase. They love to chase, they love to bark. They are very, very good um, watchdogs. Watch very, very good watchdogs. Um, they, they are small, but they will bite. What advice would you give to somebody who call it, they are interested in one of the targets? What take us through, like, what, what do you say to them? Well, I would do the same basic thing for the shepherd. I would want to know a background, have their own corgis before, because that's a big plus. Um, do they have a yard? Yeah. You don't need a big yard for a corgi, but you need a, a yard. Are you willing to, if you don't have a yard, take the dog out for exercise, etc. And believe it or not, I have to size up the person's personality. Yeah. Because if they are not the kind of person who can appreciate that a corgi coming into the house at eight weeks is a cute little puppy, come here try. But will give trouble if yes. you don't deal with it properly from it is young, the, then you the have a problem. If the dog is not stimulated, for instance, in an apartment, if the dog is not stimulated properly, that will tear up. Yeah man, him be gone, look at him, try pick up him ball and him gone with it, him gone find the ball from the thing there and gone with it. Alright, they shed a lot, right? How often do you have to groom them? Well, I have 
all my dogs where the shepherds or corgis on a two, two time a week grooming and also nail clipping schedule. So okay. twice a week they get groomed and grooming would include checking the nails, filing it, cleaning the ears. Wash them? No, I, I rarely bathe them. You know, maybe twice a year I'll bathe any dog. Really? Yeah, once you groom them and you keep them fresh, they are fine. Why, why is there a reason for that? Why you rarely bathe them? Um, I just find that they do well with the grooming. Um, in the summer is probably when, because of the humidity, mm -hmm. I might give them a bath. You know, if you get the heat in the summer and then you get a rain, sometimes the coat gets a little moly. Um, and it's not so much the coat, it's more the skin and it can harbor fungus because of our climate. Yeah. So what I'll do is bathe them then with like a, a head and shoulders or so to freshen up the skin more than the coat. All right then. All right, so now, Jalil will share with us the breed standard of the dogs and also introduce some of his dogs to us. Let's go. So this is Troy. Um, Troy is the last import I brought in. He's a red sable, which is not a very common color in the corgis, but he's a lovely male. He's out of some top breeding in UK from a kennel called Woodhenge. Yeah. And the Woodhenge Kennels, which is owned by a, um, a family named Barry and Susan Coulson, they have been very helpful to Jamaica. They have sent Jamaica some really lovely corgis, which is commendable because, as you know, we're a small country. So there's not a big dog scene like in other countries. Troy is from their kennels, and he's really a correct dog. He's done some winning here, but he came in right before COVID. So his show career was, like many other dogs, just stalled because of the COVID situation. This is the corgi in its typical show pose. I mean, I know the last time we spoke about the German Shepherd and it has a little different stack. The corgi just stands all four feet square. This is Dolly. This is the last litter of corgis we had. She's a granddaughter of Troy and a daughter of another imported male that I'll show you called Mali. Um, she is about five or six generations of my breeding going back many years and she's what you call a, a tricolor so when you say tricolor they are black with white and brown hair so they, they, the breed standard refers to that as a tricolor so this is Mali. Mali is eight years old and he's imported from the UK too he's a tricolor male and He's a local champion, a Jamaican champion, and has won two reserve best in shows, all breeds in Jamaica. So this is Angie. Angie, this is the first puppy I got out of Troy when he came. And she's, a re she's just a few points away from being a champion. Again, COVID stopped her, but she won a reserve best in show at 11 months old against the adults. She's a really, for me, a nice quality dog and good attitude, etc. Not only we're we closing another show, but we are close to closing season one of Purebred Dogs JA. Now, season two, we'll be looking at the different kennels in Jamaica, right across the island. Now, I'm asking for your help. Just comment which kennel would you would like to see. Please remember, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And follow us on all social media platforms at Purebred Dogs JA. See you soon.